best settings in college football. The Wasatch Mountain Range standing guard while passionate BYU fans take in the game day atmosphere. Head coach Bronco Mendenhall's Cougars broke through last Friday. Now quarterback Jake Heaps tries to keep the momentum going while avenging a stinging upset. The Utah State Aggies have arrived in Provo. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Russell Athletic, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. An in-state battle from Lavelle Edwards Stadium, only 127 miles separates Utah State and BYU. Last year it was the Aggies who upset the Cougars. Now BYU is out to set things straight. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitor, as always, joined by my partner, Rod Gilmore. And, Rod, a week ago, we stood here. We talked about BYU quarterback Jake Heaps. It ends up being the special teams and defense that got them a much-needed win and some momentum. Yeah. Tonight, they need another well-rounded game. Yeah, I'm surprised. We're talking about defense with BYU. After all the years of all the explosive offense, it's about their defense. And they are struggling on offense. And Bronco Mendehall has really turned to his defense to get it done. And he says it's the best front seven he's had in a, in a long, long, time they did a great job last week holding Central Florida to 17 points and then coming up with a big play late in the game to stop a would-be game-winning drive as for Utah State if three plays this year had gone their way they could be a 3-0 team you remember what happened opening week they gave Auburn all they could handle yeah. Auburn needed that magical comeback the onside kick it's been their running game that have given people trouble and think about this they went to Auburn they put up 38 points and more than 200 yards rushing and they did it with a freshman quarterback but the key to the offense is this great running back Robert Turin yeah I said great he had four touchdowns last week powerful guy but great speed to the outside as well he's the real focus of what they do offensively beautiful late afternoon here in Provo they play for the old wagon wheel they will you trying to bring it back to Provo kick off when we return College football primetime brought to you by J.C. Penny. Everybody wins. Cars.com, where confidence comes standard, and Fidelity Investments. Turn here. Right, make plays at the end, and away we go. Okay, leave yourselves. You know I love you. You know I'm gonna be here for you every single snap. Players win games, man. Players win games. Great atmosphere. Only show in town now. National television. Let's get this thing done. Let's go. Let's go. That was Utah State's head coach Gary Anderson moments ago. And he's moments away from seeing his team receive to start this game. His third season in Logan had a lot of success as the longtime defensive coordinator at Utah. Very strong recruiter. And he has the Aggies headed in the right direction. The best part of pregame is that pregame chat you get from the head coach. That's good stuff. 81st meeting between these schools. BYU's dominated, won 10 straight up until last year when Utah State thumped BYU 31 to 16. Kerwin Williams and Chris Harris back to receive. Justin Sorensen to kick off for the Cougars. And it's a line drive that goes all the way out of the end zone on the fly. So from Houston, Texas, Cypress Creek High School comes the freshman, Chucky Keaton, who came in this past summer, worked out hard, watched film, got to know guys like the veterans, Robert Terman, and earned the spot game one at Auburn and almost pulled off the big upset. One word about him, poise. He was not disturbed in the big environment at Auburn. Turbans, you'll see a lot of this tonight. 
And Turbin is off to the races. First play, could it be? Yes, touchdown Utah State. touchdown for the junior Robert Turbin 80 yards to open this game and Josh Thompson makes it 7 zip Hey, Tess, let's take a look at how they get to the edge here. Great blocking here. And then watch once you get your running back out, 20 Smith, who does a great job of blocking downfield to really spring Turbin. You get the edge taken care of. Now look at Smith. He's 20 right there. He opens up on the safety out there on Preston Hadley. And that opens up the entire sideline for Turbin to go 80 yards on the first play. Chucky Keaton. Eyes wide open. Can't be that easy. <laughs> Four touchdown runs a week ago, but was stopped on a two point conversion attempt that ended the game in overtime against Colorado State. Next time he touches the ball, gone for 80 right here. He got a lot of great help on the edge there. A couple of real key blocks to spring him. Cody Hoffman last week had a 93 yard kickoff return for a touchdown against UCF. This time he is taken down just across the 25. So out comes Jake Heaps. Last week against Central Florida in that win, 34 attempts for only 133 yards. They relied on the running game, Rod. Well, Brandon Doman, their offensive coordinator, had made it clear this week. Heaps is playing too tight. He needs him to loosen up and relax. He's going to try and do that for him. Give him things he likes, but take the pressure off of him. Play action to open the game. And he's going to go downfield. And it was well overthrown. A flag comes down at the 40 where they were covering Ross Oppo. That was Jumani Robertson on the coverage. Good to see Oppo back in there. He had a mild concussion a week ago. Yeah, and that's a good call. I mean, Open up, let your quarterback throw something he likes. A deep route, nice and easy. Holding defense, number 13, 10 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, Robertson, Robertson 13 will use his left hand. It'll get down low. See, he's got him there just a little bit, a little tag. Now, that's unusual to have that called. Ball was overthrown. That's an unusual call. Couldn't have been pass interference because the ball wasn't catchable. There's Korea. And Korea just levels a defender out for a gain of 10. Korea was running very hard last week. A good north south runner who they relied on in the second half of that win a week ago. Well, this is a good omen for BYU. They've had a hard time blocking inside, they got some of it done this time. And Brady McCady comes up, makes that tackle. But that offensive line, the guard center spot, finally coming into shape for BYU's offense. So first down to the 46. Here's Kazeda, the running back. And he gets the carry. And once again, another big hole for the Cougars as we look at that offense surrounding Jake Heaps. Well, if they're backs and receivers, you'll see an awful lot of DJ DeLuiga, who's a very quick guy, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Austin Holt outside, Hoffman, McKay Jacobson. We'll also see Alpo, who was out with a concussion last week. He's back. This offensive line, we've got the, the Reynolds brothers likely to play a lot tonight. Second and two now. Play action. Heaps plenty of time. He's looking for Alpo. And they're testing 
These Utah State cornerbacks downfield with Ross Oppo. That was Nevin Lawson with the coverage. Yeah, well, they're going after the corners who both had a little bit of trouble last week against Colorado State, but they're also doing things to make heaps comfortable. That's an easy throw. You know, the deep throw to the sideline, you don't have to worry about threading it in between safeties or linebackers. You just let it fly. And that's one of the ways you go about getting your quarterback relaxed so he isn't really as strung out as he has been the last couple of weeks. Well, this is where he hasn't been so relaxed. Third downs. Here's a third and two. Quezada. And a good surge for the first down to the 40. You know, Tess, as we were talking this week about heaps and the situation here, I was struck by Brandon Doman, the offensive coordinator, saying that the scrutiny here on the quarterback is like in the NFL. He said when he was with the 49ers, it wasn't even as bad as it is locally, being the BYU quarterback in this media market. Loaded backfield here, Korea. Another hard run. This just a gain of three that time. As Korea was taken down by Walter McClinton. Here's that Aggies front. Well, they have moved from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Lapu Ajo is inside the nose tackle spot. Garner's also in there, 37 on the outside. The linebackers, Wagner is really the standout. He makes plays all over the field, it seems, and Alexander has really come on as a pass rusher for them lately. Out of the gun on second and seven for Heats. High snap. Over the middle. Complete a first down. Di Luigi out of the backfield. And he's inside the 20. And this BYU offense is off to a good start as Di Luigi was finally taken down by McKay Brady. But a 21 yard gain for BYU. Well, we expect to see a lot of Di Luigi out of the backfield. Utah State plays a lot of man coverage. So when De Luigi comes out, he's a good, quick receiver working against a linebacker or safety. Advantage BYU. De Luigi, nice move at the line. And he's wrestled down at the 11, a gain of five. A defensive backfield for Utah State. They've already been tested. Yeah, and they will be tested. Like I mentioned earlier, they struggled a little bit on the corners last week. Lawson is the better of the two corners. Robertson got a lot of time. He will also be spelled by Sanders who will show up. Brady, the safety, what an athlete. Ran some uh, track here at BYU. Second and five now. This is Quezada. And he's going to be about a yard short of that first down line. So it'll be a third and short for BYU inside the 10 as he was cut down by Walter McClinton. Well, Tess, we've talked about this all season long. And last year, the red zone, you have to score touchdowns. It's not good enough to settle for field goals. They're about, what, 33% or just, just above that, four for 11 with touchdowns. You got to be up around 75%. Third and one now, I formation with Korea, the power back. And he's going to be just about a half a yard short as Kyle Gallagher came up and wrapped up Korea. Well, Gallagher did a great job of reading the play, slipping a would be blocker. And getting into the backfield. That's a tackle for loss. Watch him. Middle of your screen, 43. Good swim move, and he gets in there. Here they go for it. They're rushing right up to the line. Quarterback sneak. And it looked like they were able to bulldoze ahead. They didn't waste any time in making that decision. And it is a first and goal for BYU. I think Bronco Mendenhall understands that the red zone deal, kicking field goals, doesn't work. You've got to get touchdowns. You know, that 80% number you'd like to have is not very common in college. In college, the good teams are usually somewhere around 75%. So first and goal at the five. Quezada and Korea in the backfield, in the gun with heaps. Time out. 
BYU. And BYU is going to take a timeout. Trying to respond to that 80 yard touchdown run by Turbin to Provo. Beautiful sunny afternoon here in Utah. The lights just came on. See the mountains in the background here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Utah State jumped out. Opening play, 80 yards for a touchdown. And now BYU just converting a fourth down. Trying to tie this game. And there's some motion. Full start, offense. 18, five yard penalty, first down. It's a sophomore tight end, Richard Wilson. Not a good deal coming out of a timeout. You know, they do have a matchup issue down here with Oppo, number 11, the wide receiver, working against some of the smaller corners out there. Korea. He is stacked up after a game of just a yard. It was Bobby Wagner, the star linebacker for Utah State, had 17 tackles a week ago against Colorado State. Yeah, he's a player. He's all over the field. Yeah, Tess, I mentioned that matchup. Oppo goes about 6'3", 6 6'3 3, 6 3 half, facing a couple of 5'9", five, 5'10", five, corners out there. Fade top of the screen. Area. Yeah. Number 11. Split wide, top of your screen. Second and goal. Well, that was a dangerous pass. He looked Oppo's direction, almost as if he was throwing a slant. But it was... Closer to Maurice Alexander, the outside linebacker, than it was to his receiver, Oppo. Closer? He threw it right to him. Yeah. And he never saw Alexander flashing towards the flat there and threw it right to him. He, he assumed there was going to be man coverage and that the throwing lane would be wide open, but you can't make assumptions down here in the red zone. So now third and goal. Remember, they had first and goal at the five. Got backed up with the flag. Heaps to the end zone, incomplete. He was trying for Oppo again. Flag came in. And remember, a week ago, Oppo suffered that concussion down near the goal line under similar circumstances, missed the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah, he takes a shot up high, and I think they're probably going to get Brady here for what they call targeting because he launched at the head and that's a safety issue we've talked about this anytime you go above the top of the numbers that should be flagged personal foul defense number 36 targeting the defensive player left his feet and made contact number 36 is ejected oh wow K Brady is wow. ejected from the game, yeah. saying that there was intent of targeting up high. He's incredulous to that call. This is a former BYU scholarship athlete returning here to Provo. Yeah, he yeah. was a track star here at BYU. Yeah, he left his feet. You see that all the time. I'm surprised they threw him out. Now, they can do that. And I wonder if there isn't something here by the fact that Alpo is returning from a concussion. It's been in the papers. Everybody knows about it. And he missed most of last week with a concussion. It's a former BYU player. Maybe they think he targeted because that guy already had a concussion. So a first and goal. And now a flag comes in. Before the ball is snapped, ball start. Offense, number 60, five-yard penalty, first down. Bill Ethan, our referee from CFO West, already having a busy evening. i tell you one thing. I, I don't want to see Oppo come back in the ballgame. I mean, after leaving the game last week with a mild concussion and seeing the way he left the field today, I mean, I just think you ought to be safer and keep him out of the ballgame and get him healthy. We, we bring guys back too fast, in my opinion. The return from concussions. So now first and goal from just inside the nine. And he overthrew G. Dave Falsley. It's 
go back a week ago and show you what happened against UCF with Oppo. Yeah, he took a hit sort of down here around the same area. An inside route takes a hit and suffered a mild concussion, did not return to the game. Didn't practice the first couple of days, but returned to practice. I think it was Wednesday of this week, Wednesday or Thursday. Second and goal now. Heaps, quarterback run for Heaps. And Heaps gets it to the six. He was met by Chris Harris, who came in the game for the ejected McCade Brady. You know, they've had issues down here, false starts, but they've also had problems with their snap tests. I mean, they've had issues with the snap all season long than that shotgun, and that one was a wobbling duck. And the timing was thrown off there a bit. Well, that's a great sign to see Ross Oppo coming back into this game. Third nice. and goal. This is where they could use him, too. And there's another high snap. And just over the outstretched arms of J.J. DiLuigi. So the kicking team will trot out on for BYU. Boy, did it seem like they spent a long time in the red zone with well, all the flags. Th they did. <laughs> a couple of false starts. They got a fresh set of downs with the personal foul. Justin Sorensen comes on after missing from 31 yards to start his season. He has made his last five field goal attempts in a row. This from 23. And Sorensen puts three on the board for BYU. Robert Turbin. We'll be back to action when we return. Boy, is he something for Utah State. Tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Oh, look at that, Rod. That does nothing for you. Make it go away. But the, the, the boar. The, Just make it go away. The pig on a spit, as we say in Italy, cignale. It's <laughs> that crust right there and all that succulent juice. All right, all right. Oh, <laughs> kidding me? Jeez. 7-3 game here in Provo. Utah State. On the return, this is Kerwin Williams. Oh, has he ever met? Brought down at the 15-yard line by Ezekiel Ansa. So we've had a fast start to this one. Turbin, only one play, the first play of the game, 80 yards. Brady ejected for that hit you saw on Oppo. And then a long drive by BYU. They could not get a touchdown out of it, although they had a couple of shots at it with a fresh set of downs inside the five. What do you do for an encore? Well, they go the other way. It's Michael Smith. And Smith tackled for a loss of two by Brandon Ogletree and Wagner. We saw Utah State get outside on the very first play and get 80 yards out of it. Running inside or near the tackle area with that front is difficult. You know, I don't think Robert Turbin was supposed to be out there. Illegal substitution. 12th player left the huddle. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So after going 80 yards and a touchdown on their first play, their next two, they're going in the other direction. Second and 17 now. Empty backfield for Chucky Keaton. Screen game. And just a gain of about three that time to Kerwin Williams. Let's look at the backs and receivers for the Aggies. Well, you've seen what Turbin can do. He gets a little bit of help in that backfield from Michael Smith on the outside. Matt Austin's the leading receiver. Stanley Morrison's a quick guy. Eric Motes is also a solid receiver out there for him. Third and 11 now. Turbin is back in the game in the slot to the far side. They have to get out to the 24. Keaton trying to keep the play alive. And he just gets rid of it 
as the pressure was coming from Kyle Vinoy and the rest of that BYU front seven. That defense can be really, really tough. Big inside, good speed on the edges. Keaton does a smart thing getting away from a little pressure inside where he can create, but he throws his ball away. That's the right thing or else he's going to have a big sack there. Utah State's Tyler Bennett is third in the country in punting average. And he's going to need a good boot here. J.D. Falslev. Nice move to cross midfield. So BYU will have good field position after their defense did the job against Utah State. Well, you mentioned their defense. How about Kyle Vinoy? He's really done a lot of good stuff for this team. There you see him on the outside. Look what he did against Ole Miss. Not only does he get the sack, he gets the strip. And how about a scoop and score to boot? And last week, nice job late in the game. UCF driving to try to get a tying score, a game-winning score. He knocks this ball in the air, deflected for a pick. And then we also see he got a, almost a sack just a couple of minutes ago. And he had a key sack at the end of last week's game to seal that win. Quezada fighting for about a yard and a half that time. Saw so Van Noy pressuring Keaton on that third and long. How did you feel about the decision by the officials to take Brady out of the ballgame? Hey, you're the uh, former defensive back. Who was going after those receivers coming off coming across the middle for years? How'd you feel about it? I thought the the penalty was legit. I thought kicking him out of the game was excessive Chris Harris replaces him Oh, and they tried to go with a scene to the tight end Austin Holt and take advantage of those Inexperienced safeties, but they just missed well You can see how heaps just gets a little bit too amped up a little bit too pumped up. He threw that ball too hard you need a little touch to drop that one in over the linebacker and in front of the safety. You see Heaps just one for six to start this game. And now a third and eight. Could have been an offsides. There it is. Free play for BYU. Incomplete. But we'll hear the flag here. As it looked like an Aggies defender had jumped. Upside defense number 45 was in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, third down. That was a junior linebacker, Maurice Alexander. He's been coming on strong the past few weeks. Well, it's another third down for Heaps, and he's kind of flirting with danger here. We've seen him be off and late. He's got to make his decisions a little bit faster. Better timing and I, I think they may think in terms of running at a couple of downs here because they've gotten off to such a tough start throwing the ball. Third and three after the penalty. And that is caught right at the sticks. The spot should give it to him as Marcus Matthews settled in right at about three and a half yards past the line of scrimmage before he was tackled by Alexander. Well, that was a, a key, a nice third down pickup for BYU. They have struggled with that. Heats in particular has had his issues on third down this season. Only 44% completion percentage on third down. So every one he can get just helps build that confidence. Yep. It's a pass on first down now. And he gets it complete to his tight end, Holt. And Holt is inside the 20, down to the 14-yard line. He's a good-looking big target at 6'5", 247. Oh, you talked about confidence? I think Heaps picked up some confidence after that short pickup for the first down. Look at him here. Nice, strong, tall in the pocket. Follows through, puts some zip on the ball. Right on the money, allows his guy to run with the ball after the catch. That's good quarterback play. That's what they want to see on a more consistent basis. Is out on first down. Finds a seam in the left side of the offensive line and runs for four yards before he's met by Connor Williams. Yeah, Richard Wilson, the tight end to the left side, did a great job of giving him an alley to run inside of. When your tight ends can block on the edge, it really works for you. 
Watch 18. He gets his butt inside so he can turn his body and push Alexander outside. That creates the lane. Second and six, Di Luigi this time. Nowhere to go as he was met by Kyle Gallagher. I love what Coach Anderson had to say about Gallagher. He said he plays like he has a spare body in the closet. Just throws himself <laughs> at every ball carrier. <laughs> Have to use that spare a lot then. Well, they got a big third down here. Remember last time they were down here? They had a couple of third downs and did not convert. Oh, they had numerous shots in the red zone with all the penalties. And a timeout is going to be taken by Utah State. It'll be third and six down at the 10 yard line. Joe Tessitore and Rod Gilmore here in Provo. 7-3 Aggies on top. Second trip into the red zone for BYU, Rod. They have had their issues. Talked about first downs being issues. Look, tonight, third down, one of two. Red zone, 0 for 3. Not accurate here, but it doesn't take much for Heath to correct it. Third and six. They bring pressure. Di Luigi, oh, he tried to fight for the extra yardage, but it's going to be just short as Maurice Alexander wouldn't let go of him. Nice job by Alexander. And covering Di Luigi out of the backfield is tough, and Alexander actually grabbed him and got away with it. That's a smart play when you can sneak in, get it done. Remember, they went for it on fourth down earlier when they were in the red zone. Yeah, well, not now. Well, Riley Nelson is in the game. Well, they he, are is their, he is their fourth down package quarterback. Yeah, I'm surprised here. I thought they'd kick the field goal to draw within one. Fourth and one, Riley Nelson running to the edge. He's got it, fighting for the end zone. And he's going to be marked out at the one-yard line. Chris Harris came up. The backup safety who's playing for McKay Brady who's ejected and Matt Nelson. Well, when you run the quarterback down here, you give yourself an extra blocker and even things out. See the lead blocker that time over there, Korea. And Nelson ran more like a fullback than a quarterback. Nice finish. Heaps back in now, first and goal. Korea. No signal yet, and he's stacked up short. You know, Bronco Mendenhall just got tired of not being able to convert down in the in the red zone here. Avaya Lasiki, the nose guard for Utah State, was able to plug that hole. So Riley Nelson giving them the first and goal. Now a second and goal from inside the one. Quarterback sneak. Still no call. Touchdown. They had to get right into that pile to find out, but it's the result they wanted. Can you find him? <laughs> Can you find him? That's the job the referees had to deal with down there. And that was a delay in the call. Sorensen, perfect eight for eight on extra points this year. So Riley Nelson, who's from Logan, Utah, the home of Utah State, comes in and gets that fourth down to keep it alive. Team miles northeast of where we are here in Provo is Sundance Resort, beautiful ski resort. Robert Redford acquired this land back in 1969. A year-round resort. You can see what it looks like on a beautiful sunny day today. 10-7. BYU after they converted the fourth down and Jake Heaps muscled it in to take the lead. Sorensen to kick to Williams and Harris.
And this will get the flag as it just ducked out before that pylon. Second time that Sorensen has kicked a kickoff out of bounds already this season. That'll start. Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. First down, Utah State. Good field position for Utah State to begin their third possession. The first possession took one play, 80 yards. Turbin. And look at him just lower those pads and drive out to the 46 yard line. This week, ABC's Saturday Night Football, number eight, Nebraska, number seven, Wisconsin, Cornhuskers' first conference game in the Big Ten. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Second and three now. Keaton sprinting to the far side. And he has the completion. Oh, did he hold on to that? The ball came loose. And they are ruling it a completion that time. No, but now that now that's being yeah. overruled. Yeah, Matt Austin took that hit by Corby Eason and the ball was juggled. Yeah, they saw what you saw, and he then used the ball to try and brace himself. It's a little bit too late. That ball came out after he was hit. This might be turban time on third down. Is there a running back with bigger arms and call oh, ball? He's just got guns. <laughs> Start calling him Papa. 5'10, 216. Massively built up top. It's third and three. Here comes the fly, Stanley Morrison, and he is wrapped up. Just a gain of one, and Brandon Ogletree was right on top of little Stanley Morrison. That fly sweep didn't go anywhere. Well, Ogletree does a nice job of seeing this. You see him pointing right there. He flows, no one gets a hand on him, and he just chases us down, which is, a, which is a tough job considering how quick Morrison is. So Bennett back out to punt. False slip, back deep. Told you Bennett, number three in the country in punting average. And a big boot that goes into the end zone. So that BYU defense able to corral Utah State again and send Jake Heaps back out there. Well, we talked about that BYU defense and how they've been the real focal point of this team this season. They've done a great job. They gave up a lot of points to Utah a couple of weeks ago, but that was because of seven turnovers and really bad field position. Otherwise, this defense has played really, really well this year. That was a nightmare day for them. The diamond backfield. Bezada. And he doesn't go anywhere. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage that time by Walter McClinton. BYU has had the football most of the game. 26 plays already. And remember, they were down in the red zone. It seemed like forever. Got nothing one time settled for a field goal and they're just going to let the clock run down here at the end of the first it started with a bang for utah state the 80 yard touchdown run by turban but byu two good drives to take the lead 10-7 on a beautiful day here in provo